Fox News, Russian Jehovah's Witness member sentenced to prison for extremism. On October 11th, a district court in southern Russia sentenced a disabled seven, pff, so dyslexic, a disabled 59 year old Jehovah's Witness, Vladimir uh, Shkachibub, dub, Shkachibub, dub, to more than four years in prison for violating Russia's criminal code relating to, quote, organizing the activity of an extremist community. Radio Free Europe reported that uh, Scotchadub was conducting Bible study sessions in his village. Scotchadub's charges are just one in a series of religiously inspired arrests and charges carried out by the religious go the Russian government. A 2020 report from the International Institute for Religious Freedoms detailed the, quote, misuse of anti-extremism legislation in Russia and listed three main targeted religions, Muslims, Falun Gong, and Jehovah's Witnesses. In a statement from the Jehovah's Witness headquarters, Scotchadub said he is being prosecuted solely for his peaceful religious activities. So I wanted to talk about this news because I think it's really interesting what we're seeing lately. So right now, it seems that there is a crackdown that is happening on um, not only Jehovah's Witnesses um, and their members, but there is a crackdown on other fringe religious movements happening in Russia, um, like the Church of Scientology, which we talked about last week as being um declared an undesirable organization which means that basically any any other ngo that tries to work with them will then themselves become an undesirable organization making them virtually untouchable many people have speculated that this is the first step in um further criminalizing and um restricting the practice of scientology in russia um and in July or June or July, we covered the story of, I believe it was at least three men who were Jehovah's Witnesses being sentenced to several years in prison for um, practicing their faith. We covered another story about this recently. So it seems like there is a wave of crackdowns that are happening specifically on JWs recently, but also on these um, unusual um, religious groups in general. I mean, it should be noted that in terms of your know, fringe religious groups, these are organizations who I fully and can make a well argued claim that they are, these are destructive cults. Okay. Um, obviously I think that all religious practice is some harmful to some degree, but this is on the extreme end of how harmful these, um, organizations as well as just the ideology themselves is. I do think they're uh, destructive. I think they are corrosive. They are harmful to um, families. They're harmful to society. They are harmful to the health of their members and um, actively um, inhibit the livelihood uh, progression and thriving of their own members for their own institutional gain. Um, however, this is not a good way to go about fighting the problem of these destructive organizations and their subsequent ideologies. Um, we've talked about this many times before. Um, I think that this is coming from Russia not appreciating um, that these uh, particularly destructive cults have prevent them from kind of consolidating their monopoly on um, the respect for their authority, basically. Um, the strength of conviction um, to a harmful degree that these members have towards their ideology um, obviously threatens the totalitarian <laughs> um, authority that, um, that, that they desire. And so they persecute these groups. Um, Armin, do you have any thoughts no, on this? No, you covered everything that I think needs to be said. Like, that was perfect. 
so I'm not gonna add anything. Yeah, I think um, there's something else I wanted to say. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Um, these cases when the Russian government does this actually fuels and bolsters mm -hmm. these groups. Um, so on a local level, um, this this sort of activity can actually deepen the faith and conviction of the members you are who are personally affected in this in the local community but then these destructive groups like the jehovah's witnesses like scientology or like falun gong will take these examples and then they will use these experiences these real life experiences from their members then basically as marketing and to further deepen the pers persecutory delusions that they fuel and build and reinforce within their members. Um, and this is extremely helpful in particular with phobia indoctrination, which is a very um, effective way of securing control over an individual's psyche. Um, so this is, this is another reason of why this is a horrible way to go about tackling the very real issues of these terrible ideologies and groups that have abusive practices um, is that they can actually manipulate this for their own gain, um, both on a local level and internationally. Um, they can even use it to garner sympathy from members outside of their own group. Um, and then use that as a means to extract funds or actually recruit. Um, that being said, I do have genuine sympathy for people who, the individuals who are persecuted in this way. Um, I don't sympathize with the organizations at large, um, especially given their behavior towards their own members of their community, or in the case of like Scientology, their persecution of people outside of it as well. Yeah, that was pretty good. Was oh, pretty thank good. you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below